Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Shady, Director of the Alaska Division of Agriculture. So welcome to another Thursday Facebook Live. Today's uh, probably be a little shorter than some because we're going to talk about regs and some other things that we're thinking about doing as we move forward here in the next six months. So first of all, um, you know, regulations are how we implement law. And so when the legislature says that we can do a program, we can set up uh, policies, well, that's in a broad scale. And to get into the details of how it's gonna operate, we write regulations. Regulations are a formal process. So first of all, we went out and we did this a year ago, we went out and scoped and said, hey, what, what regs are working, what regs are not working, so that people would know, um, you know kind of what we were thinking about doing. And uh, frankly, I didn't get much feedback. And I was a little bit surprised because I like to get feedback and I like to hear from industry and the public what do we need to do? Because we can't do better if we don't know where the problems are. So that being said, I decided, well, you know, we're about to get started on this again. Let's reach out again to the public and say, hey, we're thinking about going down this road again. We have some things we need to do and we'd really like your feedback. Once we get into the formal process of writing regs and that we have the Administrative Procedures Act and we follow that, we follow that to the letter because that's how we make sure we have legally defensible uh, programs in, as related to the regulation. So there's a couple of things we don't have a choice, we have to do. First one is we have to write permanent regulations for an industrial hemp program. And you can say, well, you've got regulations. Yes, we do. We wrote pilot program regulations and they're probably not gonna change a whole lot from the original regulations that became effective, uh, if I remember right, April 4th in uh, 2019. So we've been operating under the pilot program. The great news, Senator Hughes uh, bill, Senate Bill 27 was passed, the governor signed, uh, had near unanimous support in the legislature. And so we now have a permanent program. We also had in that uh, bill, the ability to apply to the USDA for a permanent grow program so that we're tied into the USDA hemp program. That was approved on December 28th, effective, January 1st of this year. So we have met our obligations uh, with the USDA and with the legislature, but now what we have to do, and it was agreed with the USDA, is we'll make these permanent regulations. There are gonna be a couple of changes that we need to do. Uh, Senate Bill 27 said that we can uh, look out and check criminal records and make sure that applicants have not had a violation uh, related to drugs within the last 10 years. Uh, and now that that's a requirement of the USDA, we'll add that into the restrictions of being in the program. We also realized that um, some areas we might've been a little more specific on uh, how to do things and technologies evolved, testing's better, testing's faster. And so we're going to go to some of the international standards or we'll at least consider looking at that and being to where we stay in alignment with national and international trends. The whole idea of regulations is to make it simple and effective for the industry. Uh, I've been in the private sector most of my life and I don't like regulations I can't understand. And so when we write them, we try to write them so that if the guy on the street reads them, he or she can understand exactly what we're asking. And then I don't have a problem if enforcement comes down the line, I can say, no, these are very simple. These are very clear. If you're not following them, you're doing it on purpose. It's not, and I don't know, you know, it doesn't get you very far in an enforcement action, but truly when people can't understand the regs, I've read, I, I still read California's regs and uh, industrial hemp and I can barely understand them and I'm pretty, pretty well adept at industrial hemp. So uh, we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna make them permanent. We're gonna make it easier. We're going to try to make adjustments to where Alaska's in industry uh, has clear and concise uh, regulations. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't get yourself registered. You know, I, I, I've done everything I can to make people understand you know, we were writing the ticket book and if you're not a registered uh, registrant in the program and you're selling industrial hemp product or you're growing it or you're manufacturing it, uh, it it's gonna be enforcement and, and the citations start at $500. So when 
the application costs you 400 and the fine is $500. As a business person and an economist, it seems to me that it makes more sense to get yourself signed up. So that's coming. And uh, while we're doing that, we have a few other things that we need to look at. We had industry come to us and um, it, it started because we were asked to certify uh, some pet food products that were going out of state. They were going on an international market. And they wanted a, they needed a phytosanitary certificate, a USDA approval that these are safe and quality products. We don't have a program. We had no regulations to fall back on. So we, unfortunately, were not allowed to certify that uh, shipment. And therefore, they lost that sale because it couldn't legally go to an international market. They came to us and said, well, what do we have to do? Well, there are two options or follow FDA rules. I'll admit that's not going to happen uh, because the level of uh, requirements for the FDA um, are, are designed for large ag, large uh, pet food manufacturers. So we're going to write some pet food manufacturing rules that are pretty simple. Uh, the goal, as always, is the safety of people and pets. And you're going to say, well, how does pet food have anything to do with people safety? There have been a number of uh, problems where people got sick from handling or, believe it or not, even eating pet food. So, you know, while I'm not going to be too worried about people eating pet food, I mean, that's probably something we want to make sure they don't do. Uh, the fact that kids were feeding their animals the pet food and picked up some really nasty uh, things that made them very sick, uh, that is a concern. And so it's, again, uh, a food safety, a, a human safety, and a pet safety issue uh, because we really want to make sure that what uh, people are selling and giving to their pets is safe for their pet as well. So pet foods and industrial hemp, those are definites that we're going to be moving along on. And we have uh, looked at the national uh, code and have been in contact with the people that know best about this. And so uh, we'll be looking, uh, I've been talking to people in the industry. We've, we've asked them to give us their ideas. Again, if you have ideas, if you're in the pet food industry, you want to be part of this discussion, let us know what you think the concerns are. And we will take that into uh, consideration, probably have a past a public meeting talk to folks about that, and then we'll start down the formal process. The other, and it, it's kind of a trifecta, we're going to do three sets of regs. And the reason that we're doing that in a batch, and it's animal feed, um, which is a little different than just your pet food, uh, your seed and your fertilizer regulations. And you're like, how does, um, actually, I misstated. What I'm trying to say is our invasives our seed and our fertilizer regulations. And they say, how do they tie together? Well, invasives, unfortunately, have been coming in our animal feed. We've had uh, seed issues uh, from the Chinese uh, issues that everybody was well aware of. And we have fertilizer coming into the state and farmers coming to us saying, hey, it worked great last year. It doesn't work very good this year. What's the difference? And we suspect that they didn't get good fertilizer. And because those things go hand in hand and they cross-reference, we're going to look at that and say, hey, in your seed, you can't have invasives. And we're going to deal with that part of invasives regulation, talking about seeds that are allowed to come into the state, to making sure they're clean. They don't have pathogens, they don't have pests, and they're not unwanted seed. Animal feed. Again, we've talked about that's got to be a safe product for the animals but we have a lot of seed that's coming in this animal feed that has got invasives in it. And we're gonna to have to figure out how to do to certified uh, seed or feed because either way you're getting bad things put on the field. And you say, how does it get on the field? Well, you know, the manure gets spread, the seeds in the manure from the hay, uh, that's a bit of a problem. And so we'll look at that with pesticides, uh, get in the hay and then it's transferred. And if people don't know that they have a pesticide residual, they can put things on land for a purpose that that's gonna be detrimental. you be careful what manure you put in your garden, make sure it doesn't have any herbicides, broadleaf herbicides that are gonna kill the plants that you want in your garden. I mean, those are the kind of things 
that we look at and we try to make sure um, that people are understanding. The goal is to make it clear so that everybody knows where the dangers are. The goal is not to be the heavy handed part of the state. We, we want everybody to operate as quickly and easily and as free of, of oversight as possible. But in order for people to do that, they have to be educated. And that's the biggest part of regulations to make sure that people are educated in the dangers and the issues they need to be watching out for. And then unfortunately, we have some bad actors on both a national and an international uh, basis that we have to worry about. And so we don't want synthetics. We don't want bad products. They're gonna hurt you, they're gonna hurt your animals out there. And so it is not uh, a simple task to do any of these, to take three sets of regulations on at once um, would not normally be my choice, but industry needs this and it needs it now. We are, we are working really hard on food sovereignty. We're trying to make and help sure that people can grow in one of the roadblocks we found was we have the lack of regulations in areas that are causing problems. And I know that seems to go against uh, the, the common mantra is no regs, get rid of regs. Simple regs in the right place are supportive of industry. And so we're gonna take that, we're gonna look at it and we want public involvement. And that's why I'm doing this today is if any of these subjects are near and dear to your heart, then we wanna hear it. We wanna hear what the problems were. We wanna hear what you think the solutions are. Because if people bring me a problem and they don't bring me a solution, it takes that much longer. And it may not be the ultimate solution we use, but it's really good to get people's perspective and viewpoint on what are we trying to do so that then we can take all the different viewpoints, we can figure out a really good common ground, a positive way to make people's lives better. And I know sometimes I sound just a little Pollyannish, and maybe I am, but I was born here, I was raised here, and I believe in what Alaska agriculture can do. And so I, my job, I think, is to be in the greatest cheerleader for ag and what we can do locally. So we're, we're gonna work on all of this. Again, we wanna hear from you if you have ideas. If there's regulations you don't like, I really wanna hear. I mean, I've had a lot of people come in and go, I really don't like that regulation. And I'm like, which one do you not like? And I go, well, that's a USDA regulation and this is what we'll have to do to deal with it. Or it's a cottage food industry regulation that's over at DEC. And so I'll send you over there to work with them to fix those problems. But all in all, we work with the USDA on GibGap and a lot of other programs that we can support and make sure you stay within those federal guidelines. And we also work to make sure that you can work with our sister agencies to stay within, the, within their guidelines. And yes, at times it helps when another agency walks in and helps with the communication to where we make sure the right solution is found. And so with that, I wanna thank you once again for another Facebook Thursday. We really appreciate the fact that people watch and learn from these. We're always open to the feedback. Next week, I'm going to be back in and I have uh, the great honor of representing the division in front of the House Finance Subcommittee on Monday, be in Juneau Monday, Tuesday, working with our legislators, the governor's office and others to push ag forward. And on Thursday, I'll give you guys a little update of what's happening in Juneau as it relates to agriculture. Again, you guys know I try to keep an open door and uh, the phone lines are open. Sorry, I know there's three people that I need to call back right now and it's been a few days. Uh, we're getting ready for legislature and that makes it a little tough on me sometimes. I try not to call people at 10 o'clock at night. But if you leave me a message and say, call me late in the evening, well, then you might get a little quicker call back. So we do try to get back with you. We answer our emails, we answer our phones, we do our best. And I really appreciate uh, the, uh, the fact that everybody understands we run a small lean staff. We work really hard to support you in the industry. Uh, so sometimes it takes us a little while to get back with you. We, we do apologize in advance. Uh, but we have got out micro grants this year. We have a lot of things going, especially crop grants. Uh, we'll be having those coming up in the near future so people can have an update. Uh, new cycle coming up real soon. Uh, so watch our grants page. 
Uh, you know, if you're not a, an Alaska grown and a division of ag Facebook um, participant, hey, sign up, do that because that's how we get messages out. And uh, so we're gonna continue to expand our ability to get out with the public. John, who's sitting here running the computer today, he is the guru. And we're trying to make sure that we listen to you and we get the message out on things you need to know. So with that, thanks. Have a great week.